We are living in an economy where having a side gig, a side hustle, or a side business is more important than ever. For 80% of Americans, you will need some sort of second stream of income. That way you can afford your lifestyle. Now for the majority of people, this is bad news. Oh my God, I have to go out and find more work. But if you have that minority mindset, this can be a great opportunity for you to really just pad on your income and do something that you love that can provide you with a whole lot more freedom in the future if you know what you're doing. Back in the day, you had households with just one working person. You had the man that went to work and then you had the woman that stayed at home who did not work. Now, that was just how society functioned at the time. That was how the economy worked. But if you look at this just from a financial perspective, that one income allowed people and families to be able to afford life and groceries and vacations and buy a home. Nowadays, it's two income households. You have the man, the woman, or whatever the partnership is, however the household dynamics are, you have two people that are working to support their household. Now, even with these two people, people are still struggling financially. You would think that now people are making double the money, so it'd be much easier for people to go out and build wealth and become successful financially, but that's not the case. People are broker than ever now because we're seeing the cost of living around us go up very fast thanks to inflation, and we're also seeing our standard of living grow very quickly because a couple of decades ago, there was no such thing as an iPhone or a smartwatch or Lululemon leggings. And so we've seen the growth of technology. So we want more things, we want nicer things, which also means that now we need more money in order to be able to survive. The next generation is going to be, not only are you gonna have two incomes, but you're also gonna have a side gig or a side hustle. This is where you wanna get educated and get on top of this curve right now. That way you can start earning more money, that way you have more money to invest, that way you have more money to build wealth, and that way you have more money to have your financial freedom. And this is so important now because now we're also going through this great resignation. We're going through a major change in our work system and our environment. So you need to understand what's going on. That way you can capitalize on the system and what's going on around us. That's why today I wanna to talk about how and why the economy is shifting. Then I want to talk about some of the different ways that you can earn money and then I want to talk about the things that you need to know about what's coming in the future. When the pandemic hit, you had a few things happen. You had some people who were now able to work from home and they were making the same amount of money as before or more money because now these companies started making more money, they started giving bigger bonuses to their employees and they might have gotten stimulus checks on top of that. And then you had some people that were not able to work from home. They had to continue working their jobs, even if it was a minimum wage job, and they didn't really get any sort of hazard pay from their company, uh, but they did get some stimulus checks from the government, but still, they were still making money just from their jobs, but they had to go to work every single day, and they also had the potential risk of getting sick. And then you had the people that didn't have to work from home because now their companies just shut down. And so now they were getting unemployment checks and they were getting stimulus checks. And in some instances, these people that were sitting at home playing video games all day were making more money than the people that were going to work every single day to get paid. This started to frustrate a lot of people because people go to work to get paid. Now, obviously you should enjoy what you do. You should love what you do. But if you don't do what you do to get paid, then you should just ask your boss not to pay you. So people were getting frustrated because now they're either working or not working in the imbalance in the economic system wasn't making sense to a lot of people so people started to rethink what is important to them how should they get paid and what do they want to do then as more and more people were able to work from home they started to realize that hey i'm more productive when i'm working from home and i can do more things that i like and i can go to the gym when i want and i can get my car taken care of when i want and i can spend more time with my kids when i want so people were now starting to realize that I like this flexibility of being able to work from home because when I'm in the office, I'm just working on the computer anyways. So why do I need to be sitting at a designated desk for eight hours a day when I can just work from home and kind of work throughout the day? People who are working from home are working longer hours because now they're working from morning to night but they're working on their own schedule. And that's when some companies started to say, all right, now you need to come back into the office again like normal. Now, some people started to get irritated. They said, why do I need to go back into the office again when I was working just fine from home? In fact, I was being more productive from home. I was doing more work from home and I was able to do a whole lot more things in my day because now I don't gotta sit in traffic and I don't gotta commute. So why do you need me to come into the office? And this created the next shift in the economy, which was the great resignation. We were already facing a massive labor shortage across the country where you have tons of companies that are looking for work, they're looking for employees, but you have a lot of people that are not working. And then you started to see the biggest voluntary exodus of people who were leaving their jobs voluntarily. They weren't leaving their jobs because they weren't getting paid well. They were leaving their jobs because they didn't like the way they were treated at their jobs. They didn't like their lifestyle because now for the first time, people started to look at their jobs not just as a paycheck, 
but as something to complement their lifestyle and their lives. Because now, when people are looking for a job, they're not just looking for how much money am I going to get paid, they're looking for how much value am I going to get out of this job? Am I going to be happy here? Does the job align with my lifestyle? Meaning, can I work from home or do I have to work from the office? Does it align with my morals and regarding masks and vaccines? And is this job something that I want to do? And then they look at your pay. So people are looking at jobs very differently now than they did before. And so people are starting to quit because they're realizing that the job that they have doesn't fit their values. Now, on an economic level, this is creating a whole bunch of issues in the economy because companies are struggling to find work, they're struggling to find labor, they're struggling to grow, they're having to pay more money to employees, which is good for employees, bad for the company because now they're not making as big of profits. And so it's creating a very weird shift in the economy and we are going to see some of these old dinosaur type companies die because they're not willing to get with the times. But it's great for employees, it's great for people because now for the first time, you have the upper hand. You can now go look for jobs and you can find something that better fits your lifestyle and companies are fighting for employees. They're fighting for people. They're fighting with better pay. They're fighting with a better lifestyle. They're fighting with better benefits. So this is good news for employees. And that's exactly what we did here at The Minority Mindset. As soon as this pandemic hit, we started to follow the Dropbox model. Dropbox was one of the first tech companies to create something called the virtual first model, which means that, hey, you don't have a designated desk anymore. You can come into the office when you want, or you can work from home, you can work from the beach. All you have to do is make sure that you're getting the work done. Don't miss the meetings. Don't miss the deadlines. So on the employment level, we are seeing a major shift through this great resignation where you have a lot of people voluntarily leaving their jobs, and this is creating a big gap in the employment marketplace. Then on the inflationary side, you have the cost of living going up very fast. You have the Federal Reserve Bank and the government still printing money. They're still trying to create more inflation because that's the only way that the United States government is going to be able to afford their $29 trillion worth of national debt because when you see more inflation, that means that the value of the dollar goes down so the United States government can then pay back the $29 trillion of national debt with cheaper dollars. So the government and the Fed want to create more inflation, which is hurting the average person because now the price of things keep going up. So you have this higher cost of living and now if you go to work a job, one job isn't enough. Two jobs aren't enough. What people need now is they need their jobs and then they need some sort of additional supplemental income in order to be able to survive in this economy. Luckily, we live in this technology age where it is more accessible than ever to get some sort of side hustle or side gig where you can work some additional hours whenever you want and earn some extra cash. You can drive for Uber or you can drive for Lyft or you can deliver food through Grubhub or Uber Eats or you can deliver groceries through Amazon Fresh or Instacart. Or if you want to be a little bit more involved, you can create your own side hustle. It's kind of like creating your own small business, but now you can be a freelancer and you can help other businesses earn more money. You can help other businesses with their business and you can do this from your own home on your own schedule by being a freelancer. So if you go to a site like Fiverr or Upwork, what you can do is you can post your skills. Let's say you're good at writing, or you're good at graphic design, or you're good at video editing, or you have a cool voice and you can be a voiceover artist, or you're really good with accounting and you can help businesses manage their money better, manage their cash flow better. You can post these skills on these websites. Then, as a business needs more work, instead of hiring an employee, they can hire a freelancer like you. They can go onto these websites and say that we are looking for somebody to help us with our writing. And now if you post your skills and a business posts their advertisement to find some sort of writer, well now you two can meet. You can apply for the business a job or the business can find you and now you can provide your writing services for the business and the business will pay you for your writing service. The business is not going to tell you where to work. They're not going to tell you what hours you need to work. I mean, they might, depending on what the job is. But in general, they're not going to tell you that you have to be on the computer from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. In some occasions, you will see that, but in most occasions, you will not. What the business will do is they're going to tell you what they want, how long of an article they want, and what they want the article to be about, and they'll tell you what they're willing to pay you. And if this is acceptable to you, you can accept it, and now you just have a new side gig that you can work on on weekends or in evenings or whenever you want, and now you can do this work and earn some extra cash because of it. And depending on how entrepreneurial-minded you are, this can lead to a whole lot more opportunities because now not only can you start doing this writing work for other businesses, but you could potentially create your own agency where now you have other writers that work 
work under you. And so when people come to you for writing work, you can designate this not just to yourself, but to other writers. And so now you start to build your own business. But again, this takes a lot more work and now you need to really have the entrepreneurial mind to build this sort of agency. Or if you are even more entrepreneurial minded, then you can look at starting your own business or you can look at creating content in today's economy. Let me start by talking about content because this is one of the things that is very easy to understand. Like people understand that if you build a big YouTube channel, you can make a lot of money. Now, it is very hard to build a YouTube channel. You have a lot of competition. But the thing that's interesting now is you also have the growth of shorter videos. Things like TikTok and Instagram Reels, which has just created a brand new industry, a whole new opportunity for people to create content. I was at a financial conference in Austin not too long ago. And when I was there, I met so many young TikTokers between the ages of 19 and 28 years old who were making tens of thousands of dollars a month. So somewhere between 20,000 and 50, 60,000 dollars a month through their TikTok page. And some of them hadn't even been on TikTok for a year. These are people that understood that a lot of people were moving to TikTok quickly. So they got onto TikTok, they started to understand the TikTok trends, and they started to make viral videos. And then they started reaching out to companies to sponsor the videos. And now they're making a lot of money on TikTok by making these videos. Now, obviously, you want to now take this money and scale it into a real business because you don't want to just rely on the TikTok algorithm. Because if the algorithm turns off or something kind of fades away, well, now you're screwed because now you went from earning 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month to zero. You never want to be in that situation. So you want to be smart. And if you were in that position where you're making that money, you want to reinvest it and to build a real sustainable business. But there are so many ways for you to create content, whether it's TikTok or YouTube or podcasts or Instagram or your blog. There are so many ways for you to create content and then you can build an audience online. And once you build an audience, there are so many different ways that you can monetize that way you can build a brand. Now, again, this doesn't mean that you have to be a content creator. Not everybody has it in them to be a content creator. But if this is something that you're interested in, it is an opportunity now that is accessible to anybody. You can start a YouTube channel with less than $100. I started the Minority Mindset YouTube channel with less than $100. I started making videos off of my phone with a tripod that I bought off of Amazon for 20 bucks. I bought a $25 light and that was it. And now our YouTube channel has over a million subscribers and we have transformed our YouTube channel into a full financial education and media company. And we are one of the fastest growing financial education and media companies on the internet. You saw a similar boom in the cryptocurrency market. There are so many newfound millionaires in the cryptocurrency market because cryptocurrency was one of the biggest redistributions of wealth ever because you had so many people that got onto it who were losing trust with the Federal Reserve Bank and the government. So they started buying cryptocurrency and then more and more people started to adopt cryptocurrency and then they were able to ride up the wave and build a lot of wealth because of it. There's still a lot of opportunity in the cryptocurrency market, but you just don't want to be one of the people that's trying to chase the hype, that's trying to get rich quick. You want to be one of the people that's educated and then make smart decisions based off of your now education. Or if you have an itch to create a product, well, now you can create your own product and you can sell it on the internet. The internet has made selling your product and marketing your product more accessible than ever because the internet is really just a place where people hang out digitally. Before, if you created a product, it took a long time to create a product and you had to go through all the efforts of creating a product. And once you did, then you had to open up a store. And then people had to come to your store and then hopefully people would like your product. So the success of your business depended on either where your store was located or what stores your product was in. And it's not always easy to get your product into a store, even if you have a good product. Nowadays, it's much more accessible because you can market your own product on your own e-commerce store. You can sell it on Amazon. And so you have the accessibility of showing your product to the world. Does that mean it's easy? No. It is very hard because now it's accessible to everybody, but it is accessible. And if you're willing to put in the work, now you can create your own product and then you can market it on the internet. And you don't even have to worry about trying to get it into stores. You can start selling immediately. You just have to understand marketing. The number one skill you need in order to make money on the internet is marketing. Now, when most people hear marketing, they think of the traditional marketing of how do I purchase TV advertisements and commercials? That is not what marketing means. Marketing means how do you get your product seen in front of people? And this doesn't just have to be a product, it's your brand. How do you get your product seen in front of people? You have the organic marketing and you have the paid marketing. There is such a big gap between what people think marketing is and what marketing really is on the internet. And if you want to be able to make money on the internet, you have to be able to market because all marketing is, is getting eyeballs on your brand or your product. So if you know how to get eyeballs on your brand or product, 
you will be able to make money on the internet. And if you can be very good at it, there's no limit to how much money you can make because now you can sell your own product, people can pay you for your marketing services, you can sell other people's products. I mean, there is an infinite amount of money in this space because if you know how to market your products, if you know how to get eyeballs on the internet, well now you have people's attention and everybody will be willing to pay you to understand how to market their brands. The economy is shifting and the pandemic helped us shift into this digital world even faster than ever. And so what you need to do is you need to understand this and you want to be able to capitalize on this shift. That way you can get a piece of the upside because it is more important than ever due to the higher inflation and the higher standard of living. And you don't want to be one of the people that's not going into debt to afford these nice things. You want to be able to afford these things, which means you're going to need to earn more money. And one of the most accessible ways to do that is by understanding how to earn some more money on the internet. Money can't buy you happiness, but money can buy you a nice car. And money can buy you a nice home for your family. And money can buy your spouse a nice vacation. And money can buy you some extra guac. But before you can get the freedom that money can buy you, you need to know where your money needs to go before you put your money towards all of your wants. And we all know that guacamole is definitely a need. The first place your money needs to go is obviously your basic needs. This is your car, your house, your food, your water, your basic necessities that you need in order to survive. The thing that you really gotta do here is you gotta really draw a line to understand where your real needs are and where your wants start. My cousin's friend just graduated college and he got this new position in Phoenix. So he flew out to Phoenix, got this new job. The only problem was he needed a car to get to him from work and he didn't have a lot of money to buy a new car. So he talks to my cousin about what he should do and they talked about getting a used car that way he didn't have to blow all of his money to get a new car or blow his future money on a new car. Anyways, so he's looking at used cars and he ends up going to the BMW dealership, calls up my cousin and he says, guess what? I'm buying a new four series. So now this guy, let's call him Bunty 2.0, needed a car. But instead of buying a car with cash that he could afford, that way he didn't have to worry about payments, he ended up going to the BMW dealership and he bought himself a 4 Series where now he's going to be paying five to $600 a month for at least the next three years to lease out this car. So let's take a look at this. You need a car. And I think he put down $4,000 when he leased the BMW. And so you have a couple options. You can go out, put down $4,000 and lease a car. And now you're going to be paying right around five to $600 a month. Let's just say $500 a month. And this is now a payments game that you're starting. Once you lease a car at the end of the lease, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to want to lease another car or buy another car because at the end of the lease, all these car companies are going to tack on a whole bunch of fines and fees if you don't take another car from this company. So it's very unattractive to go out and buy a different car somewhere else or buy something that you can afford with cash. So when people start this payment scheme, they stay on this payment scheme forever. So now let's assume that now you're going to be paying this $500 a month every month for the next 30 years. After 30 years, what's going to happen? You're going to be left with nothing. Even if you own your car after 30 years, you're going to own a car that's really worth nothing because your cars aren't worth anything. But if you took this $4,000 and you bought yourself a used car with cash, a good working condition car. Now you have this $4,000 car, you have no monthly payments. What you can do is instead take this $500 a month and invest it. And if you took this $500 a month and you invested it and you could get a reasonable 7% and no return on your money. So you're just throwing your money in the stock market and you're hoping to get a little bit below average return. So we're not even talking about beating the market or even trying to meet the market. We're talking about a little bit below average. You just get a 7% return and you do this for the next 30 years. You're going to have something like $600,000 in your account on the side just because you used this money to pay yourself instead of using this money to pay your car company. And so this is where you gotta decide what's your need versus what's your want. You need a car. You just want a BMW. Now, don't get me wrong here. I want you to drive a nice car. I love nice cars. I really like BMWs. But you gotta decide what your goal is right now. Are you trying to flex on Instagram or are you trying to become wealthy? Because these two things are going to give you two financially different results. If you're just trying to flex on Instagram, then sure, blow your money on a car. But if your goal is to become wealthy, then screw the car right now. Go invest this money into yourself and buy something beat up that is working. That way you have this money every single month that you can invest into yourself. That way you can build your wealth. Once you are ready, then go out and buy yourself whatever car you want because you can afford it without worrying about the price because now you're building that wealth or you've already built that wealth. This is where you gotta really dig deep and figure out what do you really need and what do you just want. 
because every dollar that you're spending on things that you don't need is a dollar that you cannot invest back in yourself. Now, you gotta understand here also, the goal is not to live small for the rest of your life. I don't want you to be the super frugal person who's just pinching pennies because at the end of the day, a penny saved is just a penny. I just want you to understand that right now, the easiest way to have some extra cash is just by not spending all of your cash. And so if you can understand how to live below your means, that way you have some extra cash, now you can put this money to work to help build you wealth. Now, again, I don't want you to just live small. I want you to work to grow the pie because there's a limit to how many pennies you can pinch and how small you can live, but there's no limit to how much money you can earn. But the first step to being able to build this wealth is you gotta stop blowing all your money on things that you don't need. That way you have money to buy things that will actually build you wealth. The second place your money needs to go is towards your savings, but you gotta make sure you're doing this the right way. Growing up, I was always told that if I wanted to become wealthy, the way you do that is by making a big salary and then you save as much money as possible. Turns out that's a big lie. You will never become wealthy by just saving your money. When you save your money, your money is just sitting flat. It's not growing. Well, at the same time, the value of your savings and your dollars are losing value and being diluted because of inflation. That's why when we talk about saving money, you want to make sure you're saving your money the right way and the smart way, not the majority mindset way. For the majority of people, saving money is the path to freedom because when you save your money, now you have this big bank account, hopefully, that you can now use to go and buy things with. The only problem with that is if you could go out and save $100,000, you might feel rich, but $100,000 today is not gonna buy you what $100,000 could 50 years ago, and $100,000 in 50 years will not be able to buy you what $100,000 can today. 50 years ago, if you had $100,000, you would be able to buy what $600,000 can buy you today. And in 50 years from now, $100,000, depending on what inflation is, might only be able to buy you half or a quarter of what $100,000 can buy you today. When I save my money, I'm only saving money for three things. I'm saving money for emergencies, I'm saving money for a big purchase, or I'm saving money for an investment. You gotta have a savings account with some cash in there because when an emergency happens, because that's life, you wanna make sure you have cash to fall back on. That way when your car breaks down or your AC breaks, you don't gotta go into debt to fix the problem. A good savings fund should have something like three to 12 months worth of expenses. So depending on what your risk tolerance is, that's where you kinda wanna have the savings fund be. Second, you want to save for big purchases. If you want to buy a brand new car, or you want to buy yourself a new home and you need a down payment, or you want to buy a big TV, these things cost money and you got to save money in order to do that. You have to treat these two savings accounts differently because the last thing you want to do is use your emergency money to go out and buy a TV. Do not mix these accounts together because these need to be separate. And third, you should save your money for investments. I have a separate account where I have cash that I'm waiting to invest. I'm always looking for investment deals, whether it's on the stock market or whether it's real estate. I want to find a good opportunity, this is the cash that I use to go and buy it. I'm not using my emergency money, I want to use my investment money for that, which is why you want to keep this separate. And this brings me to number three. The third place you need to invest your money is in your investments. Your investments are things that are going to pay you for owning them, because now when you have some extra cash, there's a couple things that you can do. You can go out and go shopping, buy yourself a brand new wardrobe, which isn't going to make you any money, or you can take this extra cash and you can invest it into a company or invest it into a property that is going to pay you for owning it. At the very bare minimum, you have to own some stocks or real estate. If you want to invest other places like crypto and forex and commodities, gold and silver, fine, but make sure you at least own some stocks and real estate. The whole idea behind investing your money in stocks is instead of you taking your money and going out shopping in the mall and spending all your money in stores, you're taking your money and you're buying a piece of the store company. That way as stores make more money, so do you. It's essentially a way for you to stop being just a consumer and spending all your money to make everybody else rich and for you to start being a producer. That way now when companies make money, you're one of the people that's benefiting because if the company makes more money, so do you. With real estate, it's a little bit different. With real estate, you own something physical and tangible because when you invest your money in the stock, you just get a paper certificate saying that you own shares of a company, but if the company goes bust, then you own nothing. Real estate, on the other hand, when you buy a property, you own land, you own a building, you own bricks, you own windows. So you own something that you can see, feel, and touch, and it creates income because if you buy a property, you can have a family live in there and they'll pay you rent every single month for living in your property. So now you own something real that you can see and feel and you're creating income. And the whole hope is if you're buying a property in a good area, the property value is gonna go up and so will your rents. So you're creating income and you own something physical and tangible. Stocks and real estate are both good investments. I have my money in both. I prefer real estate 
just because I like the income that I can create and I like the idea of owning something real, but I also have money in the stock market. And so you got to really just figure out what your goals are and what helps you do that. The fourth place your money needs to go is asset protection, because as soon as people realize you have money, they're going to try to take their hands and put it in your pocket and take some of your money and keep it for themselves. You don't want to let that happen, which is why you want to put up a shield asset protection to protect yourself and your family. Now, while I am an attorney, I'm not your attorney. So if you have specific legal questions, make sure you talk to a professional in your area. First thing you gotta do is you gotta have some estate planning. The whole idea behind this is if you're building wealth, you're gonna have money. And when you die, you gotta know where this money is gonna go because if you do not tell this money where to go, then your family is gonna be fighting for who gets the money. If you wanna avoid those fights, plan ahead, do some estate planning. There's a couple things you can do. You can get a will, you can get a trust. It's gonna depend on what your financial situation is as to what is better for you. But the whole idea behind a will and a trust is you get to tell your money after you die where your money is gonna go. If you don't do this type of estate planning when you're alive, then the government's gonna come in and they're gonna decide where your money should go. You never want the government to decide where your money should go. So do this type of estate planning that way your family is not fighting for your money in the future. You also gotta protect your assets by having insurance. Nobody likes paying for insurance, but insurance is a small price you pay today to protect you against a big headache in the future. This is gonna be things like car insurance, health insurance, home insurance, life insurance. I know it's not fun to pay for all of these things, but if something bad were to happen to your car, your home, your health, your life, then your insurance company would come in and they would pay you or your family a big check that your family is at least financially okay. Things like car insurance, health insurance, home insurance are pretty obvious because if your car burns down or if your house lights on fire, then the insurance company is gonna come in and they're gonna give you a check to go out and buy a new home or a new car. But life insurance isn't always straightforward. The whole idea behind life insurance is if if you die within your life insurance period, then your life insurance company will give your family a big check. That way, at least your family will be able to survive financially, even if you're not there, because the last thing you want is for you to be the breadwinner for your family, and then you're no longer there, and your family cannot survive anymore without you, so they have to put up a GoFundMe page to raise money to pay for your funeral costs and to pay for your basic living costs. The good news about life insurance is it doesn't have to cost you a whole lot of money. Like if you're a healthy 30 year old guy, you can get a million dollar life insurance policy for less than a dollar a day. I'm not gonna to go too deep into life insurance in this video because I've already talked about it on a YouTube channel. But if you do want to see how you can get a free life insurance quote, I got the link to how you can do it with our sponsor Policy Genius in the description below. The fifth place your money needs to go is in your education, even if you think you're done with school. Growing up, I always thought that education meant school. Nowadays, for me, education means everything outside of the classroom. One of the easiest ways to fast track your financial success is just to keep learning because the more you know, the more you can do. My education comes from five different places, books, classes, experts, experience, and mistakes. I'm not a big fan of actually reading books, but I go on a five mile walk or I try to go on a five mile walk every morning and this takes me about an hour and a half and during my walk, I like to listen to audiobooks. I buy quite a few online classes. Some of them help me personally and some of them help our business grow. You can learn from experts on YouTube or podcasts or you can hire consultants. When it comes to learning from experience, one of the core values at Minority Mindset is fast is better than slow. And the whole idea behind that is instead of spending all your time just thinking about what to do, go out and implement it and learn from whatever you're doing. And even if you make a mistake, which is the fifth way I learn, you can learn way more from your mistakes than you do your successes. I made a video on YouTube where I talked about my worst real estate deal ever. That was the only property I ever lost money on, but that money that I lost was really just like tuition into real estate investing because I learned so much about investing in real estate from that one deal. Learn as much as you can by reading books, watching YouTube videos, and taking classes. That's good but it's never gonna replace experiential learning. You have to go out and you gotta just put yourself out there because you're always gonna run over hurdles that other people have not, and you gotta figure out how to overcome them. The sixth place your money's got to go is your health, and this isn't what most people think about when they think of health. If you've ever heard me talk about my quadrifid triangle, I believe that there are four fitnesses in life, four places that you need to be fit if you wanna live a happy and successful life. The bottom is physical fitness, then mental fitness, then spiritual fitness, and at the very top, it is financial fitness. If you wanna invest in your health, you need to be investing in your physical health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. Everything else is about your financial health. Starting at the bottom with your physical health, invest in good food and a gym membership or some workout equipment. Look, I'm not a doctor, sorry mom and dad, but the best medicine is being proactive and taking care of your health. I know you're working hard to get that bonus and feed your family and go on that vacation, but you gotta take care of your body too because this is the only one you got. 
Second is your mental health. If you are not happy, it does not matter how much money you have. It does not matter how successful you are. You will never be able to appreciate the things you accomplished. And so if you have this anxiety or depression and you are not happy, get it taken care of. Go into therapy, get some counseling, go into rehab. Whatever the cost is, pay it because if you are not happy and you're not able to live with yourself then it does not matter how successful you are because your mind is going to be holding you back so take care of your mental health because that is going to be a pillar for the success of your whole life and the third part of this is your spiritual health and when i say spiritual health i don't just mean religion i mean it could mean that but it's really what is your purpose do you really feel like you're on this earth to help underserved people if it is go out and give some of your money to charity or go give some of your money to your purpose figure out what it is that's driving passion that wakes you up every single morning and puts the money into that because if you do not feel fulfilled if you do not feel like you have a purpose then you're going to have no reason to get out of bed every single day and the seventh place your money needs to go is to your family now when i say your family i don't mean that when your cousin bunty goes and blows his money at gucci that he goes and asks you for another two thousand dollars and you just give him this money i mean taking care of your family you know when you're on your journey to build wealth you're going to do whatever you can to invest every single penny you can because you understand that this money invested is going to be able to make you a whole lot more money in the future. And as you do that, you're going to have to make sacrifices as a family. Maybe you don't get the nice car. Maybe you don't get that new home. Maybe you don't go on that vacation right now. But as you really start to build this financial foundation and this financial wealth, reward your family. Take your family and your kids on a nice vacation. Buy your spouse something nice because of what they put up with. I know it is hard building wealth. You got to make sacrifices. But as you start to see the success, don't just live frugal in the sense that you never enjoy your money for the rest of your life. Money only has value if you spend it and support the people that supported you. So as you start to build your wealth, make sure you take care of your family too. The C-level executives have a duty to increase the stock price. Who does that benefit? It doesn't benefit the workers unless you're taking a piece of your paycheck and you're buying some stock in your company or unless your company is giving you some stock in the company. But otherwise, the changing stock price doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect these people unless you